Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build these 15mm scale metal and resin British recovery vehicles for Flames of War. As you can see, I've got a Cromwell ARV and a Churchill ARV to go with all the Churchills I've been building lately. Let's start with the Churchill. In the blister we can see there is a hull and a set of tracks. That's all. The hull is pretty nicely detailed, though not as sharp as it might be were it in plastic. You can see the turret opening has been patched up and there are cables and wood blocks for recovering stuck tanks. The tracks are similarly detailed and while not perfect are quite reasonable and fairly neatly cast. There's no magnetization or anything else to do other than file down the parts to remove the very minor casting lines and imperfections, and to make sure the track parts fit the hull properly. After test fitting, they can be glued into place. They fit quite well, there isn't much of a gap at all. I think these are the best of the Battlefront Churchill hulls that I've built. I decided to add a little more detail by gluing on some of the spare track links from the Churchill box that I built the other week. That's really about all there is to building this model. Here's how it looks next to some of the regular Churchills that it's intended to recover. Onto the Cromwell ARV. As you can see, the resin hull is absolutely covered in cables, boxes, beams and poles. It's quite neatly cast and I think it looks really great. This will be quite interesting to paint up. The track set is fairly reasonable for metal tracks. Unlike the Churchill, this model has a bunch of other parts too, like these front guards rear guards, the exhaust cowl, and this machine gun that comes on a sprue with other parts presumably from the regular Cromwell kit. The tracks need a little bit of preparatory cleanup before being glued on. They don't have keying to guide their positioning like the Churchill does, though they do have left and right markings which might be helpful. When gluing the tracks into place, the details on the hull can help guide the positioning of the track parts. Next, clean up and glue on the exhaust cowl. Then clean up the hull machine gun and glue it into place. Using tweezers for this part is a good idea. I kind of think the machine gun looks a bit too big and chunky. I find it distracting. It's not terrible though. Next, I test fit the front guards. Unfortunately, they don't seem to fit very well, so I decided to leave them off. I think it looks more battle-worn that way anyhow. I did, however, after a fair bit of clean-up with a file, glue on the rear guards. The part did fit a bit better and I like the step look they have, though they do look a bit wonky and not quite straight on the tank. Not a big deal though. That's it, two very simple models completed. I'm pleased with how both of these models have turned out, though I do like the way the Cromwell looks more than the Churchill, mostly due to the loads of stowage that comes moulded on the hull. Both models were quite quick and easy to assemble, obviously the Cromwell taking a little bit more time and effort owing to the extra parts. Flamesofwar.com lacks any kind of instructions for these kits, but you shouldn't really need them, particularly for the Churchill, since it's just a hull and tracks. I'm sure these won't be super important models to have for my British forces, but I think they're nice to have just in case. They're interesting vehicles anyway, and they should be fun to paint up. I hope this video has been helpful or interesting. As always, comments are appreciated. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching. Farewell.